Hello, this is Use the Types episode number one. And today we are going to install VS Code, that's Visual Studio Code, on our Ubuntu desktop. And we're going to install the Haskaro extension for VS Code to help us with our Haskell development. So we'll first fire up our web browser. I'm going to go to code.visualstudio.com and we're going to download the .deb for Ubuntu The installer is downloaded, we're going to keep it. And we'll double click on it to get the installation started. Code, code editing, redefined, install. We'll authenticate. VS Code is installed. Close this. Close the browser. I'm going to click on Show Applications. Type code up here. There's Visual Studio Code. We'll start her up. Once Visual Studio Code is loaded, so it opens up the web browser to get started. We're going to close that down. I'm going to add Visual Studio Code to my favorites in the dock. And I'm going to drag it to the top. That's where I like it. I'm going to opt out of collecting usage data. So I have to do this via a configuration setting. So back in VS Code, we'll go to Preferences, Settings. We're going to search for Telemetry. And I want to disable the Crash Reporter by setting that to False. And I want to set Enable Telemetry to False as well. And as that previous dialog, which I dismissed, said we'll need to reset for that to take effect. So we'll close it down, close the browser down, start Visual Studio Code up again. There are our settings. Don't care about it anymore. We're going to close that tab. And there we go. Plain vanilla Visual Studio Code freshly installed. Now let's get stuck in with some Haskell extensions. So we're going to click on this icon here, Extensions, Control Shift X. And the extension I use is Haskaro, a full featured Haskell IDE. So we're going to install that. Great, it's installed. I'm going to shut down just to be on the safe side and restart. At the same time, we're going to go to our terminal over here. Maximize that. We'll go into our SRC directory, and you'll see that we have the two projects that we created last time, Hello World and Hello World 2. We'll go into Hello World 2, since that's the one which has a nice cabal file with my name in it. Hooray! Now the installation of VS Code will have installed the command code, and you can say code dot to open VS Code in this directory, treating the directory as sort of the project container. Now you'll see on the left hand side all the files in our project. We can open up the SRC directory, double click on main.hs, and we've got nice syntax highlighting from Haskaro. 
what you're going to see here is an error. And this is nothing to freak out about. Let's just quickly read that. Configuring GHCI with the following package is hello world 2. Did not find expected autogen file, blah. This is the critical part. Executable named intero not found on path. Well, let's fix that. We'll close VS Code down again. We're going to go back to our project. And intero is a Haskell package that Haskaro uses for its IDE integrations. I think it uses intero for code introspection, looking up types, symbols, things like that. And we could install intero globally. That would be a simple case of, I think, stack install intero. But we're actually going to use build. We'll first start by running stack which intero, and that's an error because of course it should be stack exec which intero to see if intero is on the path. It isn't. And we're going to do stack build intero. And the important thing about this is it's going to download and install intero for the correct version corresponding to the stack LTS snapshot associated with the current program. Look at that, we have some errors. Let's figure out how we're going to fix that. T info is missing. So we're going to quickly figure out which dependency we need to install. It's yes, time, time zone, zone info. info. So Typically, when I run into errors like this, I will paste this and search for it. How oh, we get no errors? Shows you how well I know how to use Google. Let's type it in this search box instead. Paste is plain text. It's still going to do that. Let's just get rid of some of this file junk at the beginning of the search. Okay. User bin LD cannot find LT info, minus LT info. I'm suspecting there's a library called T info we need to install. Let's look at that, intero. This is the issue tracker for intero. Let's see what it says. I'm hoping it's just going to say install a particular package. Oh. That's not a great. Oh, there we go. Liberty info dev. So because this is a pretty clean Ubuntu, I don't have many development packages installed. So we're going to install that one. And we're going to see if Intero will install. One of the things that Stack doesn't automatically manage for you when building Haskell is installing external libraries, native libraries, such as this tinfo dev. Intro is installed. We can see from our Stack exec which intero that it's installed the intero executable in the dot stack work directory under our project. So this allows you to have multiple different versions of intero, one per project, where it's the correct version of intero for the given compiler, in this case, GHC 8.4.3. You can also install it globally. I'm not going to show you how to do it here. You can figure it out. OK, I'm going to tell you. You would do stack install intero, and it will then copy the binary into the dot local bin directory. In fact, I'll show you that. Why not? So now you see it's created an executable under home user types dot local bin into row. I'm going to delete that for now. I like to use the project specific version. Let's fire up code again. We get our nice 
Haskell syntax highlighting. And now it's initializing Haskell and it's done. What this gives you is some extra options. You can right click on a symbol and you get go to definition, peak definition, find all references and rename symbol. Those four context menu commands are provided by Haskell and are not available without that extension. As we start working on more complex projects, we'll use these more often. And it will also provide red squigglies. So let's, I don't know, create something, use a symbol that doesn't exist, save it, and we get the red squiggly. And you get the tooltip with the description of the error. So variable not in scope, put str xxxn. It's inferred the type, but there is no symbol with that name. Delete all the x's and save, and the squiggly goes away. And we're done.